so the students have finished, let's say they've completed all their work here, they hand it into you, now it's time for you to figure out where they're at. Each question has its own scoring guide. So you'll see after every question, and this particular one here is okay. looking at inferring, oh, nice. visualizing, yeah. finding important ideas. Okay. They answer the questions, then you can figure out where they're at based on their answer. Okay. And the guide is very helpful because it has a scoring guide um, key, answer key. So it gives you some possible answers to show you where students would at. Would right. be at. So level two looks like this, level three okay. looks like that. And so they have it for every question and right. for every card. Okay. So it's very yes. helpful. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, really a helpful so thing So it to eliminates do. that uncertainty yeah, that the teacher has even, or the subjectivity. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So that's yeah. been, you know, that's been solved for you, that, that issue, which is always an issue, right? Yeah. So this is great. So you have okay. that. And then the question that I always get is, how does this go on the IEP? Like ultimately, how to re report our findings? And, um, and so what I always tell, um, suggest the teachers to do, which is what I do, is you sort of look at the, the breadth of the scoring. Mm -hmm. So if they have anything that's level one or two, if they have anything level four, like really strong, really or an area of challenge, those mm -hmm. are the things you want to highlight, just right. like the IEP does, right? Strengths mm -hmm. and needs. So I might say a level four summarizing, level two making connections, level one metacognition. Right. So it gives us a snapshot where the student's strengths and needs lie. Okay. So that's, that's, and also you would say the level of the reading card. So okay. six late reading card. Yes. So, um, so on the IEP, then they would have the needs, uh, the challenges, and then what would be needed to actually improve or fill the gaps in those particular areas, right? Yeah. So in your, that's right. So you're, if you're, if one of your pages is going to be literacy mm -hmm. or reading skills or, or whatever it is, then you would sort of focus on the direct instruction you're going to do in inferencing or right. wherever the need is. Yes. Yeah. On your page three. I've identified some of those particular challenges the student has and then you've sort of set a course mm -hmm. of how to work on those particular challenges and needs. Exactly. And then um, would you do a follow-up using the, the same assessment? Yes. So, okay. and this is kind of interesting because you do do a follow-up assessment. You can do it mid-year. You can, If you feel a student's making a lot of progress. Right it is a nice time to sort of revisit the assessment and you can let them know, I, I can see you're making progress. Let's try okay. this again. Let's just see yes. how you've improved because I want to make sure I record this. Right. Um, and then you can do the assessment again. When you do the assessment a second time, it doesn't have to be the same one. You might want right. to do the six yeah. late or the seven so, early yeah. next time. Mm -hmm. You can actually use that as an evaluation. Oh, okay. So if you've noticed they have improved um, right. and you think it's a good marker of their improvement, it can become an assessment of. Okay, yeah. that's very nice. It doesn't nice. ever have to be, but as yes. on the second go around, yes. it can be. So we talk about doing three assessments a year. Mm -hmm. So you could actually use this or that intake yeah. entrance assessment. You could. Then sometime around the end of the first semester. Mm -hmm. You could do it again. Yeah, and then maybe one at the end of the year. You just could. To, you wouldn't yeah. undertake every single challenge. And I Is think that that's, right? that's a good point. So yes. you wouldn't do, oh my goodness, you know, every single, you know, question in here has shown that they have gaps. That's so right. you wouldn't do everything. You maybe focus yeah. on the skill that needs the that improvement. The that, most yes. improvement yep. or maybe the one that needs the least is just a little bit of yep. a push over the top. You, you would make it a decision. The easiest ones to tackle immediately, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't do every single gap. You don't have to. No, no it would you be don't two. Have to do it. So you sort of, yeah. you take off those one and then reassess that particular area of challenge. Especially when it's mid-year or if you're using it for an assessment. Of, right. And then at the end of the year, we do do the whole thing again. Okay. Um, so the whole thing yeah. from beginning to end again. Yeah, twice a year. At Twice a year. So that like would be. If you're be, going to use it once, you right. have to use it twice. Yes. <laughs> okay. You have to use it twice. You can't just use it once. No. Right. Yeah. And then you, would, you wouldn't you would use the original card. No. That they, you'd you'd nev now give them. A different because well, the idea would be they by the end of the year ideally they have their reading level yes has improved has improved so you right. would probably do a, um, a word reading assessment yes. again to find out whether yeah. their word reading um, assessment has improved yeah right? and even if Our it's still if it, even if it's still within the same range um, hopefully the reading comprehension strategies have improved right there will have been some kind of improvement mm -hmm. ideally so if you're a six early now you can use a six late or a seven early right. and use this and then go through this, the assessment again with them. You're beyond the diagnostic phase and now right. you want to do some assessments as yes. learning or even of learning. Yeah. 
You can definitely um, go onto the Google Drive, right. download the PDF, download the doc version of this, and you can change it. Okay. So you're not going to use marketing to teens. You're going to use the novel you're working on, or right. you're going to use yes. the particular article that you yes. found from Newzella, or whatever you or want. Or a to video, do. even video, or a poetry, or, or whatever, right? Anything you want. Yeah. And just use the same format. Yes. And you can use the same um, scoring guide as yes. well. Yes. And then so it's really adaptable. Graphic organizers in there, so and it's then, going to be useful. That's right. That's right. Right, yeah. for any any particular yes. organizing of ideas or whatever, exactly. whatever it is they're doing. Yeah. And that kind of leads into the writing component okay. as well. Yes. Um, for the same, yeah. And so, so this is a writing so task at the end of a, that assignment. And a lot of teachers don't because, okay. again, it's, it tends to be a time-consuming um, assessment. Right. But like, like Dolores is saying, if you're going to be able to, if you're going to use it and adapt it to what you're already doing yes. and, uh, and sort of broaden its purpose, then you might find this useful. When teachers ask about writing assessments, we don't have um, writing assessments in the same way we have reading assessments. We do have exemplars that we can use, but they are outdated. So mm -hmm. they're from 2003, ministry mm -hmm. exemplars. We don't have current ones, um, as far as I know. Um, and we can use the OSSLT for grade 10 assessments, but we do seem to have some gaps in what we yes. have for writing assessments. Right. So this one is a, is a good one to do, because okay. again, it's grade four to eight, or grade four to 10 rather, and um, and what you do is you, based on the whatever card you have, so the chill out card, you find the chill out reading task. Okay. And then there it is. And it gives you a little question. Like imagine right. you're writing a letter to your younger self. What would yes. you suggest? Okay. So it's pulling on the information, pulling on the big ideas from the reading card. Right. And then they have to plan their writing out. So it asks okay. them to plan their writing. This particular, um, the diagnostic has, I'm sure you, you know, some of you may have your own, um, you want to use, but this has all kinds of really nice yeah, choices graphic organizers. for graphic and of organizers. The, uh, the electronic a graphic organizer that they'll have on their uh, computers, a lot of them have several. Right, so people have, yeah, yeah. So they can have either the ones use, If like the student use. is writing as a problem, they could use a voice to text and use an online right. graphic organizer, right? Right, right. sure. If, if the actual, you know, issue writing. of penmanship or writing is a problem. They can definitely use that yeah. to organize their, their ideas. Um, and then once they have their ideas, they can write their paragraph. Right. Okay, so they have their paragraph to write, and then it's the same same sort of thing. Um, and then they have to reflect on the strategies mm -hmm. that help them write, so that metacognition right. is also in the writing strand. Okay. Um, and then they go to the back, and at the back of this kit, there is um, the writing rubric. Okay. So the writing profile rubric is the same for every assignment. Okay. Okay, for all of them. Right. And you can use this for, for any writing assignment you do. Okay, so okay. this scoring guide is scoring guide, yes, thoroughly, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's it's a very holistic approach. Yeah, like even though it's been around now for quite a while, it's actually probably one of the most useful diagnostic is, tools that it, we have. It is a useful diagnostic. I tool. couldn't imagine people not using this, like just focusing on the yeah. WOFUS and then, you know, the yeah. multiple choice, and that's it. I think because so. really it's not giving you that sort of broad understanding of where some of those more complex problems are well it is because it gives you information the woofus yeah. doesn't always give you information yeah it just tells you it, you know they're reading yes they're reading at a grade four level but it really doesn't tell you why you need some no. you need further you need further investigation right, right? so this gives yeah. you a lot more information okay and i yeah and i did say if you do this with um students and they score out, that you have to do it a second time yes i will say if students score out if it's if they're at a grade 12 reading writing comprehension level and they right. score out level four on everything, then I'm not, you know, then you can maybe find another way to assess their, yes, their right. reading and writing levels.